Hi guys, so you probably heard the news reports of the cheese company in Cheshire who have been trying to export their award-winning cheese into the EU, but they're of course facing problems. Now they've reached out to the government, they've reached out to the department responsible, DEFRA, which is the Department of Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, and they were basically told, set up in the EU. But let's hear what the owner of this company had to say so painful at the moment there my wholesale division are telling me that they have so much paperwork per consignment and absolutely nobody is offering them any advice they've tried all the channels and every single government channel and trade body channel are all firing our department back to each other now well remember before the end of the transition period that michael gove said that if any companies were having any trouble with paperwork they there was a government body set up f offering free advice, free consultation on how to deal with this paperwork. And it was, it was there ready to go, ready to help these companies. Obviously that was either a lie or it was an exaggeration. I had a conversation with DEFRA earlier in the week and I had forwarded several emails from uh, my MPs uh, over to DEFRA, they had done the same. And within that text, I had offered the solution or the option that I'd least wanted to take, which was to actually switch investment from the United Kingdom, my hometown of Macclesfield, over to France. Quite shockingly, I was told that that was probably the best idea and the best solution that they would also recommend at the moment. So the British government is recommending companies in the UK to set up in the EU. Now I've covered this already on the channel, but this is probably the most famous example of that. The cheese company, an award-winning British company, was told by the government, yeah, it's probably better to go <laughs> and set up in the EU. I don't know what to say. You would think that the government that delivered Brexit, Boris Johnson's government that promoted Brexit at every turn, spent hundreds of millions of pounds, maybe even more than that, on Brexit, telling companies you get a, you have to prepare, be ready for Brexit. Not at no one time, at no moment, were these companies told during the transition period, yeah, it's probably better that you set up in the EU. Now, what's the problem here? Some people will say, well, what's the problem? You just set up, uh, set up an office in the EU. Well, first of all, this is not investing in Britain. And second, this is a cost for companies. What, what you're doing basically is you're moving staff out of the UK and into the EU. You're moving jobs at least, maybe in some cases you're not moving your staff because the staff say, look, I can't move to France or to the Netherlands or to Belgium. I have a family here in the UK. I can't just up sticks and go. Unless there are younger people who don't have connections, but in most cases, um, people can't just leave their their homes and move to another part of the EU. Especially as, once again, uh, how could I have forgotten this? Freedom of movement has been taken away. So even if these people did want to move, even if they said to their the companies in the UK, look, I'm willing to transfer to Belgium or to the Netherlands or to France, um, they won't be able to do that so freely as they were able to do before. So the British government have, haven't just thrown companies under the bus by pushing forward this madness of Brexit. They've also made it more difficult for staff to be moved to the new location. So what that would probably mean is that Cheshire, if they want to continue to trade without as many restrictions, they have to set up in France, for example, pump money into that company in France, hire French employees and support the French community there, the, the community in France and not the British community. So, and of course, if there's, if it's about doing paperwork, they're not going to hire British people, they're going to hire, hire French people, or they may even lay off some British people to compensate. Because of course, this is also a cost. You know, businesses, buildings, staff are not free. I'm still waiting for some sort of benefit from Brexit. I'm st we're still waiting for some sort of 
um, golden story about how this, is ha this has all been a success. And where is Boris Johnson and Nigel Farage at the moment? In particular, the latter, Nigel Farage, you know, someone who has been promoting Brexit for 30 years. He said he had been promoting this idea for 30 years. And in three weeks following his success, he's completely a wall, nowhere to be found. I really wish Nigel Farage would, you know, he's very happy to go on TV when it suits him. Now that he's been asked to go on TV, you know, I didn't want to see Nigel Farage on TV. Now I'd like to see Nigel Farage on TV explaining how this is a benefit. How is this a success? How are the British people succeeding here? How are they winning? You told them that everything would be good. Of course, I imagine Nigel Farage would probably respond by saying this isn't the Brexit that he wanted. You know, and I talked about this before, how Nigel Farage, you know, is the type of guy who will say, uh, yeah, I want X, but when you give him X, he's, no, 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 not that X. <laughs> I want a different type of X. Um, and he gets away with it. Now, the number of people supporting Brexit I'm, I'm noticing is getting smaller and smaller. Even on this channel, the number of trolls who would attack me uh, or attack uh, the idea of remaining in the European Union or rejoining the European Union are starting to get smaller and smaller. The voices for Brexit are getting quieter and quieter. They do still exist. There are still a lot of them around, but um, they seem perhaps to understand that maybe it's not the time to trumpet Brexit at the moment. Businesses are suffering. Ordinary people are suffering. And the response from government is, we can't help <laughs> go to the European Union. This is shocking because I actually believed that perhaps they, the government would set up some sort of committee or some uh, action body that would go to the border and find out what the problem is. They haven't done that. They haven't reached out to companies and said, look, we're here to support you. The, the border staff are trying to do whatever they can to help businesses, lorries get through, um, small businesses get you know, deal with this paperwork. But the government itself is acting as if nothing has happened. Everything's fine. And I think the voices for perhaps rejoining the European Union are going to start to get a little bit louder now. As the Brexiteer voices get quieter, the rejoin voices will start to get louder. Companies are saying, well, what's the point in, what's the point in all of this? We were f able to trade freely before. We we're able to move our staff around Europe freely before. That's all gone now. What have we gained? What is the benefit from this? Where is the dividend? And I hope that Boris Johnson is going to be held accountable for this. Unfortunately, I think in Parliament, because Keir Starmer voted with the government on this deal, it sort of, in a way, clips his wings from being able to attack Boris Johnson completely on Brexit. But I hope someone is going to challenge him on Wednesday because businesses are suffering. People are going to lose their jobs and whatever jobs are created from Brexit, they will not be in the UK. In the UK. They will be in the EU. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?